change, we gotta fight for it. Ain't nobody gonna give it to us, we just gonna have to take it. How many more funerals do we gotta go to? How many more scenes of the crime do we gotta watch? It is still so. So it's not like I I knew a video was out, so I then I went and told on myself. I didn't know the damn video came back out. So the first time that that you told that you said that you used the word shit, who was that to? Uh, it was on on the phone to my leadership. To your leadership. Mm -hmm. Um. So you you told somebody in your leadership that you used the word shit. Mm -hmm. When they asked then, me about that. Then when the meeting happened, where you told them what happened and you left out that. Who was part of that meeting? Anybody from your leadership? Uh, yes, and then a um, uh, representative from the district. The person that you told initially that you used the word shit, were they present? In was that in that room? room. Was in that room as mm -hmm. well? And didn't bother the, to say, yeah, he told me that initially. When we asked him. Yeah, when we asked him. So it was, it was. didn't bother to. It, it was, tell me about the, tell me about the, the unlawful search. And, and then I said, of who and they tell me who it was and I said yeah he tried to give me a note this morning but I don't take notes from parents but last week I and then I went into my story and then but that person that you you told initially that you didn't stick up for me and didn't me. stick up and say yeah he told me he used shit and even when, after, when I asked even after the it just seems to me that if I were that leader and you told me initially what happened and you said you used fatty and then you came in and you said yeah this is what happened and then you left the room, and they're like, how, you know, okay, the kid's saying, or the, the video is saying that he uses the word shit. Me as a leader, I would say, yeah, he mentioned that to me in the phone call when I, when I first talked to him. He mentioned that to me, which would say you're not being dishonest. Maybe you just, I don't know. Not, I, I wasn't even thinking, when I'm in a again. Meeting, when I'm in a meeting with my boss, and I cuss, me and an employee were cussing, and we're discussing the matter, I'm not, I don't say all the cuss words that we said, unless the boss wants to hear them, because I don't want to use well, fucking stuff like that in front of my boss. Well, that and that doesn't even, to me again, that doesn't matter to me. I've went and told on myself for language I felt was inappropriate. Well, you did now, it on the first one. Now there's, yeah, there's people that are going to sit up on their high horse and say, oh, we're, you know, we shouldn't use the word shit around children. But like I said, it's, to me, it kind of, you know, takes a unit. They're like, oh man, damn, Officer Fleming's a real person. Like, he says shit. <laughs> right. You know, and then, so it kind of breaks down that barrier that's set up between me and the kids. And so, when I thought about it, yeah. when I said it, I didn't feel the need to call my supervisor at that time and say, this is what happened. Because I was like, I said, I don't want that shit. I didn't, you know, and I didn't know about any video. So I was like, that's, you know, unfortunately, that's normal interaction from me to the students. And they'll tell you that. Yeah, we've heard officers from me cuss every once in a while. And I'll tell you, there's no other officer in, on that department that builds rapport faster than me. There's just no, I'm not going to cry. You know, I, I overspilled milk or whatever. Like, I'm. I'm going to press on because there's not going to be anybody in that leadership or the district that's going to dictate my future. You know, I, I, I'm not really worried about it. Um, least, would I like to have... Out, at least you got out of there with, without yes. shit on, on officially on record. Right. You can get, and, and, you, can you know, it. obviously now my, my medical insurance is gone, but um, I, I contacted the VA. I got a meeting with them on Tuesday, so I'm going to get all that. You know, I get disability from the VA and... and you know, I, uh, it's an unfortunate situation, but again, you know, those, those people, the truth is I wasn't planning on staying there forever, you know, and it's, I am building myself up to be marketable, so I'll have other options, um, and, but again, I just want to, I want my name to be defended, you know, because to me, that, the Fleming name means something.
you know, now that this is out on the media, I, I know there's at least probably a thousand parents that are like, man, we didn't know Officer Fleming was like that. He, he intimidates y'all. But yeah. I got these two students. Um, you know, again, there's two of them. So I was like, I want another yeah, adult here. You one that's skipping ISS. Yes. Okay, and then you have Jim. Right. They're together in the restaurant. Right. And, so and I, I, you know, he may have been there, you know, like he should have been. Um, what was the intent of going to the principal? I, I don't have, I don't have that intent. Like, I just call the principal. Hey, look, found these guys in the bathroom. Then they typically discipline them, depending on if their story checks out. Well, number one, there's two of them, and, and I want another adult present since I don't have a body camera, right? I, I just, I feel like that's the best practice. It, it protects me, well, I thought it did, but it, it protects me um, to where everything that's exchanged, and I told him, just keep your hands on the wall, we'll just, we're going to hang out until the principal gets here. So you called the principal over to the, to the area where you were at? Mm-hmm. And so when you did the pat down, was the vice principal there at the no. that time? Okay. No. That I, did the pat down? I was the one looking for and then who made the decision to go to the principal's office? That's that's just where we go. They they so principal we typically come. take them down there, get their story. Vice Are you supposed to be to there? The but in this incident, the vice principal comes over there, and then you guys they're like, let's go to the office. Let's go to the office. We okay. check their story out. Whatever the administration wants to do, it's it's completely up to them at that point because it's not a law enforcement issue. You guys took both the ISS student and Jonah down to the office? Yes. And then the ISS student, I'm assuming you guys, he had to go to ISS. Or she had to go Eventually, to ISS. yeah, but he, he went through the same process. Okay. It was the same same process. Was there a search dog? ISS Yes, it's the, it's the same. Like, both kids didn't separate, get treated any. Yes. Okay, but, but in the principal's office, both if kids everything was done the same way, yeah, okay. of, of both students. Okay. So. That's important because that's a question people are going to Right, yeah. I can tell you this. District officials have described this restroom in justifying their actions. Have described this restroom as a, I quote, it doesn't make sense really, but a high drug activity area. That's what they said. Right. So then, which is course, in the police that, report as well. So then that leads to this question for the school district: What are you guys doing about this high drug activity area? We certainly hope that there's a record of you guys doing something about it. And how many kids are you stopping coming out of this restroom? based on the fact that it's a high drug, tech, drug activity area. Right. How many kids are you stopping? Or is this the first time? Is this something that just started happening? Things like that. Mm -hmm. So there's all these questions that people have. But but there has been situations to where I found other students in there um, that were supposed to be at lunch or wherever they are supposed to be, just hanging out. That's re That's Pulled re all four of them out, put them up, hey, hands on the wall. I'm gonna let you know why I'm That's doing this. That's where you this. go to hide. Right. And, and and that it was just right after the, the Texas A&M officer got shot and killed. And I'm like, listen, like this is for for weapons so you've, only. So you've patted down kids coming out of the restrooms before. Yeah, not that specific one, but but other ones, yes. Okay. Yes. And, and they were they were like yeah cool. okay we understand Officer Fleming no big deal you know and then I walked him down to the office um, and then the other student who has uh, has been heard in class saying you know I want to be bigger than Pablo Escobar um, Jonah no or the other student the other that he was with the ISS there's a person called Diamond Flamingo and. It's always it's always uh, important to verify sources. So um, Diamond Flamingo identifies himself as you. Is mm -hmm. that you? Yes, that okay. is. Um, and, and I don't I don't want this to come off like I'm some like I'm I'm uh, bitter about how it went. Because I'm, I'm not. And while I was on administrative leave, I had like a very calming like sense because even even my son's mom was like, you don't even seem worried. And I'm like, really, to be honest with you, I just feel like it's God's path right now. Like it, it wasn't it wasn't meant for me to be right here at this time. Like like he said, I, I used to see him post all kinds of stuff about police and 
you know, fuck this cop and all this other shit. And, and I'd be like, hey man, like, you just, who, just my friend. That was oh, here. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I'm like, hey, calm down. Like, let me tell you why he's doing what he did. Or if he posts something and it's like, obviously the cop is a jackass and, and can't let stuff go. I'm like, man, this dude needs to be fired. Um, and so I'm, there's, I, I want to hold my people accountable. Well, I can't even say my people anymore, but like, I want to hold police accountable even while working within the, the, the career field. So how this all tumbled on me, I'm like, man, like, again, I'm not going to cry over it, but I'm like, you couldn't, would you start watching first me or him? Well, him obviously because they they had that video. Okay. And then and then when you uh, posted the one Ooh, just recently, I'm just, I'm just my own ego. no, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, when you when you posted when you posted the one about this last one about like Kitty Hawk or whatever, um, you were like so you weren't watching you weren't watching me prior to all this. No, I I don't okay. I don't to me I I don't watch that type like those. Those people who are out doing that stuff, I don't do it because I, I know what my response is going to be. Know, did you know that Jonah's dad was a fucking civil rights activist? No, absolutely him. not. Okay. Had no idea. That, I, and that, I never had any in a room. That's a question I had for you because I was like, you know, in your, if I were in your shoes, I don't know. Not that it... Oh, it to should, fuck it, with it them? Should, it, no, 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 no. It shouldn't matter. Uh, but, I mean... But it is the real. It is a reality. Right. If yeah. I was a cop and Martin Luther King was standing over there and he looked like he was uh, doing something he shouldn't be doing, versus just some other person, yeah, I would handle Martin Luther King or kid fucking bugs, right? Right. Yeah. No. You know what I mean? So. And, and when I started watching the videos and he was, I thought like his name Jonah, was the if young. I knew, if I knew Jonah's dad was a civil rights activist, I would have been like. I probably wouldn't have done the pa unless there was, you know, a weapon involved or you know right. I felt somebody's life was in jeopardy. Um, I would have been like, I want to do this pat down, but I'm gonna call some people here first and get some witnesses, and then I'm gonna pat them down. Right. And and to be because honest with you, I, that's that's not that's not even something I would do because I, I know I, I know I'm not gonna violate someone's rights prior to dealing with them. So I don't like the only reason why I needed the the administrator up there is because it wasn't a law enforcement issue at that point. When I, there's no weapons on them. I, being in the bathroom's not a crime, you know. So why? I mean, why am I gonna reach for something that ain't there? Pat them down. All right, y'all. I feel safe with you guys, but now look, I caught y'all in the bathroom. Principal's gonna have to. Are they it. giving hall passes at that school? That yes. And he did. Yeah, he, he so abandoned the encounter me, because on. he knew that I don't have to show it to him. Okay, I in. But he tells I believe you. Things. But I, but open carry. I thought when when. I thought one of the stipulations that law enforcement required to pass the law and all that to get it going it was was that they wanted to at least be able to stop you. Right. Right. They did. Whenever whenever open carry was just coming about, you had both sides of the coin. Yeah. Basically, you had law enforcement. But it, and then but you had now you so it, open carry people, which law enforcement are too. But you can't check them then. So at the end of the day, work? at the end of the day, when open carry passed, um, there is a statute. How do you it doesn't that? say a person commits an offense if they don't, and it doesn't prescribe a penalty if they don't. Gotcha. It just uh, simply, I believe it or not, that's all it says. Now, okay, that does not supersede my Fourth Amendment right. I'm sorry, my Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. Right. Or yeah. my Fourth Amendment right. Is it Fourth or Fourteenth? I'm sure what it is. But my it doesn't it doesn't supersede my right to an unlawful search. It doesn't throw out my right to only be searched upon probable cause for a search warrant or arrest. So, so you. So in order to in order to take my gun from me, that's a search. It's a seizure. I'm protected by the Constitution against unreasonable seizure. And in order to seize something from me, it, it has to be upon reasonable suspicion of a crime. And if you don't have that, uh, the mere fact that it says I'm obligated to show you doesn't give you the right to override my constitutional right not to be seized or searched. So that's the dilemma. That's the interesting. Because yeah. they were they were trying to they were I mean they put on the open carry class and from what I from what I understood it was was that you like you said you're obligated to produce your CHL if you if you get stopped um, but 
also was and again I, I don't know the specifics because I haven't dealt with anybody open carrying around me because typically they stay away from the schools if they're doing that open carry um, so I haven't really had any interaction and it didn't pass until after I was already out of the sheriff's office so I didn't know um, but I was under the assumption that you could you could safe keep that gun for a certain amount of time if there were certain stipulations as to why you weren't doing what you were doing as far as like showing your CHL, like if you didn't give it to you. Do you give it to them or no? When they ask. I don't unless I'm under arrest. Uh, I don't provide, uh, and you don't have to provide, you don't have to provide your CHL at any time that you're not required to provide identification. Gotcha. So basically you have to be lawfully detained. So, and, and now here, here's another and, one that, that, that officers often get wrong. And we, and, as a matter of fact, this is the president that's at this. That's what he does. The ID. But if you're detaining me because you saw me over there by that bathroom and you smell weed, you don't have to ID at that point. You can investigate all you want, and until you have probably the thought that I'm going to arrest you, yeah, yeah, I don't see the speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That should, probably shouldn't. Well, and, so, I, and I'll tell you, and, and please, I want, I want this not in the video. No, it won't. But, no. but I. I was under a federal like I, like investigation. I told you, I'm not gonna, in the Air Force, I ended up getting hooked on uh, medication, basically pain pills. Um, okay. it, it led to a bigger, Opioid, like, yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it led to Surprise. something way bigger, right? Did, and did and you know I took you're not it, the only one. <laughs> yeah. And I took it as prescribed at first, right? Until my chemicals in my body is like, yeah, I need that, you know. And then it ended up going on so big right and then the OSI with their drug enforcement um, you know OSI it's like basically the Air Force is all their federal agencies in one it's Office okay. of Special Investigations okay right I think and the, and so they yeah. do undercover shit and they you know and I I got popped uh, not popped but like they I got flown back from Las Vegas to my original uh, station and as I'm, I'm hovering and got cell phone service, my wife at the time, my son's mom, was like, there's federal agents here to pick oh, you shit. up. And I was like, oh, fuck. No, I'm, it's up now, right? And so I I walk out there, and they say you can kiss. My son was under one year old at that time. And, and you uh, pissed hot? Or, huh? You pissed no, hot? No, it just, TRICARE tracks everything, man. Okay. So yeah, I was going to multiple emergency rooms. Oh, and okay, So okay. that's how they pop. Doctor they, shopping. They, yeah, okay. they turned it over right. to OSI. Okay. And so, um, I walk out, and obviously the, the jackets are there, and, and I was like, fuck, man. And they said, you can kiss your wife and your son, but you gotta come with us. And like, they had a fucking convoy, like, of all black vehicles and shit, and we drive back to the base. Oh, and, yeah, sure. and And my, my sergeant at the time beat me to the OSI building, and he... I think an army, they call it CID or something, but it's the same shit. Well... Yeah, but I don't even know if CID is is uh, federal, right? Is it CID like the like just it's basically like, the step like military above and the base police? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, so this is like, like even this is like NCIS to to the Navy and Marines is OSI to the Air Force. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, and it, it had been a year or so long investigation. Undercovers befriended me type shit. Wow. And my my sergeant came to me and just like shook me and he said, don't you fucking say anything. You have a right to remain silent. You need to remain silent. And to this day, I took that advice and I'm probably not in Leavenworth right now because of that. And, and so that's, you know, again, I don't get to talk to, I don't get to respond to the stuff that's being portrayed. However, I've used those same liberties to protect myself and stay out of prison. A damn sure ain't gonna violate somebody else's. You know, it, it's just nobody knows the backstory, right? And then I've I've told every employer up until now. Hell, I got kicked out of the Air Force with the general under honorable, and my characterization was misconduct, drug abuse. Hell, I got kicked out of the Air Force with the general under honorable, and my characterization was misconduct, drug abuse. Hell, I got kicked out of the Air Force with the general under honorable and my characterization was misconduct drug abuse. So we, but, you know, I, like I said, I'm, I'm all about 
remaining silent, you know, exercising your rights, I I fully support that. I shouldn't. I'm, I'm actually excited because I, I want my, my story out there. And he's going to be pissed. I get it. But what? But here, check, are we, are check we, this out. Are we really getting was, to the truth or was, are we not? I was, check this out. I was looking at my phone because here you go. Bullshit, Jack. You you agreed to abide by the group's direction when you joined us. The group decided to go along with the lawyer whenever he advised. He says not to do it. We need to not do it. If you can't do it, that maybe you need to be out of the group. Uh, another guy, PMP News. I don't care if you talk to him, Jack, but I think you should listen to the lawyer. The asshole wants to talk and tell you what a nice person he is. Attacks by claims of drug dealer and weapon in school. He cannot be trusted. Uh, hope you all. Hope you all calm down. We don't need this in our group. We have been here for each other, and I want to. And I would like to keep it that way. Jack needs to go. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, well, so. And again, what? What are we really doing? Are we really? Do we want the truth or not? I mean, you know. Well, if they don't want the fucking truth, then you know they can. And, find, and the truth is, like, to work with. Y your story fucking co created collateral damage, and I was the one that got hung out to dry. Yeah. Like, so, and, and, like, I would want him to understand, like, listen, my man, like, I, I, I get it. I understand where you're upset, but you got the wrong man hung. Um, so I wish we could have met under uh, better circumstances. Well, um, uh, absolutely. But uh, good luck in your future endeavors. For sure. And, and I'm, uh, I'm going to, I'm you know, it's going to. I don't I don't want to add insult to injury but I'm going to I'm not going to subscribe but I'm going to follow oh, yeah. your videos. That's not a problem. You man. know. No, I understand. And 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 I I do appreciate it. Like there's there's certain men in this world that that really want to know the truth and and investigative journalists like you are rare. Um, and and, that, and that, you know, people get misconception about what they see on my YouTube channel, but now you, you kind of. And I know, and you know me you now a little bit better. Story. And now I, now I, I you know, because I'm sure I, I ask like a hundred people, they're gonna be like, "Oh, he's fucking crazy." I'm like, "No, he sat down with me and wanted to, to, to hear my side." Not only that, this guy is a good guy. He's he's trying to rid this career, number one, of shitty cops, and number two. He's about education. So if they don't know the law now, whatever discipline they get later, they're gonna understand the law better. The bad cops make it dangerous for the good cops. Man. I'm better than I yeah, and I, and I appreciate you again. Right, Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. Well, it should be good. I don't have a target on my back. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man. This is how we do it.